Yeah, I was half asleep. Pretty sure I still have an indent of a chair. I'm like, God damn it, Granddad. Jesus. We did not have to do that. I wouldn't call it special when your soul leaves your body for like a whole ass minute. <laughs> oh no, he would fully love me talking about him like this. He'd be like, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I gave her a heart attack. It was funny. His favorite thing to do when I was little was we'd be running in the, in the house and we fully knew we weren't supposed to run in the house. Um, well, we weren't, we could, okay. We could run in the basement. We weren't supposed to run upstairs. <laughs> We were running upstairs in the hallway and uh, he would hide in one of the bedrooms and wait until we came flying around the corner, jump out and go, what are you doing? When my soul left my body as a child, God fucking damn it. God damn it. You know? But I was the first grandkid, the oldest grandkid. I mean, I am the first grandkid. I am the oldest grandkid. And the easiest to fuck with, apparently. <laughs> so. That was lovely. He thought it was great. You waited for two hours under your son's bed. Just, I appreciate the dedication. Yep. You always got to keep the kids on their toes. We only, we, he rarely ever yelled at us. There was one time I remember him getting a little snippy because we were, because we were being too loud at bedtime. Um, and even then, like my grandmother came in and was like, hey, granddad says you guys are being too loud. And we were all like, oh, fuck, you know? <laughs> yeah, we do. I was the oldest grandkid, the first grandkid. And unfortunately, I mean, I'm kidding. Again, most of the shit's jokes. Um, I look a lot like my mother. And so when the Parkinson's got, and the Alzheimer's got really bad, um, he started calling me by my mom's name and, uh, Ooh. <sighs> it just means that, you know, he also, this man, okay, my mom was a baby, right? This man would not let her cut her own steak until she like was married to my father. So when I came along at the dinner table and we'd have steak for dinner, because granddad loves steak. Um, until I was probably about 17, 18, I was not allowed to cut my own steak at the dinner table. The younger grandkids would be like, here, cut it. He would take my plate, cut it up for me, and then give it back to me. I don't know if it was just habit, <laughs> or he was just like, mm, this one can't do shit. But like, 
My granddad is the best person I've ever met in my entire life. Best person. Is he without flaw? Absolutely not. Everybody has flaws. This man could lift the front of a truck. I shit you not, we've all seen it. With the engine in it, just like. Also, he set his arm on fire three times in front of the grandkids and then goes, don't tell your mother she's gonna kill me. I was maybe nine at the time. Did he take a piece of steak as a cut up tack? Oh yeah, of course he did. Um, I was maybe nine at the time that he did this. So that means my cousin and my brother were seven and we were all like, granddad's on fire. And he just goes, we're good. And we're all like, like the grandkids are just fucking horrified. Granddad set himself, and we ran in and we were like, oh my, granddad set himself on fire. And he comes in, he's like, Joyce, it was just my arm hair, it's fine. <laughs> we immediately went home and told my mom what happened. As one does. You know? Oh, instantly told. Instantly. He did that not once, not twice, but three times in front of the grandkids. One time he was stoking a fire. Like, we had a bonfire because we used to have bonfire. That was the thing. We always had s'mores at home. Oh Basically because Granite has a terrible sweet tooth and the grandkids were an excuse to have sweets. Um... And he would just rotate the logs or put logs in without the fire tongs and would just. Fine. It's only a little bit of arm hair. And we're like, <laughs> Granddad! He just, yeah, he was great. He taught me how to drive, which I know everybody's like, that's really weird. No, my granddad taught me how to drive because my parents were busy a lot when I was a teenager and they didn't have a lot of time for me. For me, unfortunately. Um, so my granddad taught me how to drive and he used to make me drive him. He is, is he still living? Uh, he's dying like right now. Uh, and I say that so casually, but it's the only way I can say it without being upset. So yeah, he is currently dying. Um, Have I gotten used to my hair? No, I still hate it. And I told Granddad that much last night when I was sitting in the nursing home. And I'm like, you would probably still tell me that I'm pretty, Granddad, but I can't stand my haircut, and it makes me really upset. He smirked at that. Yeah, it's, it's really, it is very confusing. I will use was and is, because he's just not here anymore. Really. Alzheimer's and Parkinson Parkinson's kind of took his whole brain away. Uh, now his body is failing. So it's very much a, uh, is he or isn't he here? Can he or can he not hear me? I don't know. We don't, we assume sometimes he can, but his hearing is also kind of gone and he can't see. So it, th there's a lot there. It's, uh, it's a lot. In his 70s, late 70s, I think. I don't know, never really asked. Um, that part's not straight. Oh, he heard about my haircut. Because I know he'd sit there and he'd still tell me I'm pretty and it's just hair and it doesn't matter. 
hear me. He definitely heard when I yelled at him for giving me a heart attack last night when he decided to stop breathing for like 0.25 seconds and I went, oh my God. Um, so. I'm just gonna give it a little curl today. Because the thing is, I gotta see family members that I haven't seen in a very long time. What do I not like about it? Well, um, I wasn't supposed to have this giant shelf of hair on this side, and I'm gonna show you something in a second. Like, let me just let this thing do the thing. Um, I'm giving it a very casual curl today. It's gonna fall out anyways. Um, so I asked for face framing, like on this side, you can see that it goes down nicely. On this side, she just gave me a shelf of hair that is all the same length. Uh, also, there's an inch and a half difference. See right now because I'm standing crooked, but there's an inch and a half difference on one side than the other side. So. I mean, that's not that great. I don't love that. <laughs> So, no, thank you. They did that to your hair? I'm so sorry. It's very frustrating. Does my hair, no, um, my hair is a little frizzy right now because of the weather. And I sat in a dry ass nursing home for four hours last night and then I came home and did absolutely nothing in my normal routine and not even take off my makeup and I ate off my makeup and I ate and I flopped into bed and off my makeup and I ate and I flopped into bed and I woke up this morning. So that's where we're at. It makes, it is so noticeable, which is why I'm giving it a little curl this morning. It's only because of my part. No, no, it is not. They cut it with the part in my hair because this is where my hair parts. So, it's definitely not. Uh, yep. So this is how she meant to cut it. So I didn't know until the next day. So yes, I did pay. Does it hide it when I, no, it doesn't. I mean, it helps it look a little bit better, but it, it doesn't really hide much of anything. Curls don't hide your sins. There's the rest of the shelf that she cut. Hairstyle has fucked up my hair. That's about it. I just, yeah, this is not face sir, but I'm 98% sure this is not face framing. Um, why didn't she dry my hair? Because we were in the middle of an ice storm and there was no point in drying my hair for me to walk outside and have it get soaked again. So I left with it wet, which is fine by me because honestly, I didn't really want to have her sit there and have her blow dry my hair and then walk out in the middle of an ice storm. So. Yeah. I should have trusted very few people with my hair, but unfortunately I didn't. Um, I went to a different person because it was to 
to a different person because it was cheaper and I don't have a lot of money to spend on my hair right now. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to go back because I am terrified that it's going to be one of those situations where they try to fix it and it just keeps getting worse. And this also happened like three weeks ago now because... Again, I've been dealing with a dying family member, so I haven't really had any time. 50 hour work week and trying to spend as much time as I can over there and dealing with emotions. I just really haven't felt like going back there. So. It's just a lot. And I don't have the money to pay for to have them fix it. So it's just what it is. And this they can't, unless they cut shorter, they can't really fix it. Because they cut it already. They can't thin it out. So like I'm just gonna have to let it grow. Apparently. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Morgan. <laughs> My nose is running because it is raining. Lovely. My nose is so runny. I need a tissue, but I don't know where my tissue went. I had one. Allergies are really bad. I woke up with bloodshot eyes and I was like, they were all itchy all day yesterday. And now my nose is like deciding to be a little bitch. So I'm moving so slow this morning and I have to go to Target to go pick up my order in a few minutes because that's my lunch. Because that's the other thing is I don't have lunch. I don't have food right now. I had a frozen dinner last night when I got home at 11. But at least I ate, I guess. What the hell that piece is doing, but all right. Cool. Functions. I'm just tired. I'm just really tired. And waiting for that call is like painful. Like, I don't. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's not going to feel good getting that call. But. Waiting for the, you need to get here right now. And then the panic that's going to ensue on the drive is, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to handle that. I don't know if I'm going to have a panic attack. I have two main reactions to stressors in life because I have panic disorder and I've had a lot of trauma. And that's just saying a little bit. Um, 
I either have panic attacks or I go completely numb and I'm level-headed. This is my first like extended family members that I like did not know at all and been to their funerals and I've been to a lot of funerals in my lifetime. This is my first direct family member. This is my first grandparent. So I have no idea what's about to happen. I mean, I know what's going to happen logically, but I don't know how I'm going to react to that. I don't, I don't. And I was so, I felt so much. Nobody tells you when you're going to visit somebody who's dying how much of a, like, a little kid you're going to feel like. Because I stood outside his door for like 10 minutes afraid to go in there. Afraid of my own grandfather. I don't know why. You know, it was just, you feel like a little kid again. And you're standing there and you're like, I don't want to do this. And it was so weird last night. And I'm standing there and I'm like, stop being an idiot. You know, what the fuck are you doing? And, you know... It was just, it was just weird. And I stood there outside the door. I was like, I gotta do this. I don't want to do this, but I gotta do this. And that was a lot, you know? I'm glad somebody else did the same thing because I was standing there and I was like, I feel like an idiot. Like, I feel like this is dumb, but I know it's not because everybody grieves differently, but I feel like this is dumb. So, you're either the glue that pulls everyone together or you're a mess. Yeah, same. Um, same. And then the worst thing is when my mom is standing there and she's like, hi, dad. And I'm like, don't look down. There will be tears. You cannot let your mother see you cry, even though it's my mom and she's like, you know, she birthed me. I came out of her. What the fuck was that? <laughs> and then my dad like almost started and I was like, oh, no, don't look at anybody. Don't look. Just. I was like, you know, wow, the floor is just really interesting right now. It, like it, well I mean yeah but I'd already done that I, I had been sitting there alone with him for two and a half hours before they came back and then my mom walked in she was like hi dad and I was like oh fuck again Jesus nobody look at me like, <laughs> I need to get some water. Give me one sec. I barely drank anything this morning. Oh, hi, buddy. figure out what I'm wearing to work today. It feels so dumb to go to work. It really does. I got some, oh man, there's shit in my dress pants. I was gonna say, I got some blue dress pants, but the washer like got some powdery stuff on my dress pants. I'm not a Disney princess. Thanks. Guys, 
guys I could wear. I don't know what one wear. I got these guys I could wear. I don't know what one wears to this. I could just put on a black dress, but I feel like I feel like Granda would hate that. It's not really foggy, it's just dark and raining, like a lot. Bright colors, it's one of those things where I'm just like, I don't, and I'm aware, okay? Oh, that was cute. You can, you wanna come up? I'm aware that the aggressive. Give me one sec, I'm gonna text my boss.